OK, the last tab is the linking tab. Here we can set the appropriate linking of passes or tool in or tool out. The first section is linking section and the first option is the high feed rate mode. With this option we can determine when the rapid movement is to be generated as G0 movement and when as G1 with the defined feed rate. Selecting any of the parameters that converts G0 to G1 with a specified feed value will display a field in which we can determine the value of this feed. Another option is a low rapid retract. Regardless of what we set in the high feed rate mode, the tool retracts will be with a rapid G0 movement. The next option is keep tool down. It is responsible for the tool not to retract during movement to the next pass when this distance is less than the specified in the parameter maximum stay down distance. OK, let's check this on the example. Click OK. I set one pass in the axis and without stop to leave option. OK. OK. Now this distance is less than the distance from this field and we don't have the tool retract between the passes. OK, distance between the passes is 40 mm. So I set here, for example, 25 mm. OK. And now, as you can see, we have tool retract after each pass. OK. Set here, for example, 50 millimeters. OK. And again, we don't have the retract between passes. OK. The next option is extend before retract. This option, because the toolpath will be extended so that the tool will go completely out of the stock area. To show this parameter, let's unselect this option, OK, and run simulation. And look here, tool before retract, it will be still in material. And here we have retract. So let's edit this and select extend before retract parameter. OK. Run simulation. And now our toolpath is extended and we have retract here. OK. The second section in the linking tab is leads and transitions. The section in which we can change the tool's approach into the material, its exit from the material and the connection between the passes. The first option is lead-in, which is the entry of the tool, and the associated vertical lead-in radius parameter. By selecting this option, we will cause the tool to enter the material in an arc with a radius whose value is specified in the vertical lead-in radius parameter. OK, let's check the toolpath. And here we have an arc and edit the operation and select this option and now we don't have an arc for tool entry 
but for tool exit we still have an arc. Let's set it, the operation. Okay, we have an arc for tool exit because this option is selected. When I unselect this option, we don't have an arc for tool entry and we don't have an arc for tool exit. Okay, let's edit this operation. Select lead in and lead out parameters. And next parameter is same as lead in. This means that if this parameter is selected, the radius of the lead out parameter will be the same as for the lead in parameter. If you unselect this option, you can specify a different radius of an arc for the tool exit. Okay, the last parameter is transition type. To show how it works, select keep tool down option. Okay, now we have the smooth transition type. Click OK. And the smooth option will smoothly link next pass. Okay, next option is shortest path. OK. And the shortest path option will link the next pass with the shortest path. Usually it will be a straight line and in this case after the retract and leaving material. OK. Next option is straight line. And the straight line option will link next pass with a straight line. OK. And last option is no contact. OK. This option causes that the passes on the same Z level will be linked at the level of retraction distance. In this case, we get the same as using the shortest path option. OK. Phase strategy is already finished and this strategy is quite often used so we will definitely come back to it in the future and the next strategy is the machining of counters